Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're gonna talk about APIs and how to connect APIs with Godot. So first, we're gonna start with explaining kind of what an API is. We're going to be using a small tool called JSON Placeholder to mock call APIs. We're going to go ahead and connect Godot to that API and grab some data from it and we're going to go ahead and send data to an API that I created to demonstrate kind of what happens in the back end when you actually post data to an API. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to talk about is what an API is. So I have here draw IO and I'm going to be talking about that real quick. So if you want, you can skip ahead if you already know what that is and I'll leave a timestamp here for you to skip ahead too. But what an API is, is first you have your client, right? And so this is your Godot game instance. So actually we'll go ahead and just call this client slash Godot. And then you have what's called your API. Okay. And in this case, the API is out on the internet. Okay. So you have the internet here. So you'll see that the API is out here. So Godot is going to call out to the internet and out to the API. See, and then what the API is going to do is it's going to locally call to its own database and it's going to return data back to the API, right? And then it's going to pass that data back to your project. So that's what an API is for. It's called an application programming interface. And basically it's used to pass data from a remote location, such as the internet to your project. So it's really useful, for instance, if you were to have multiple people, let's say you wanted to send data, like a scoreboard data up to the API, then when client number two goes up there and says, hey, do I have more information here? The API can return and say, yes, here's the additional data that you requested. Here's the updated um scoreboard so now these guys say hey i need to give you a scoreboard so update scoreboard and then these guys down here get the scoreboard so basically that's how it works if that makes sense and if you guys have any questions just go ahead and ask me and i will jump in and, and give you guys a little bit more reading information i'll put a couple links in my description that kind of goes through a little bit more in-depth conversation of what these are but that's the gist of what an api is now in this case with godot what we're going to be using is we're going to be using the json placeholder website json placeholder is a website that allows you to interact with their api for free and they allow you to basically just use it for testing your code and making sure that your code is set up correctly. I believe you can also do things like set up your own JSON server as well. So, you know, in theory, you could, um, you know, do your own testing with your own seeded data. But if you guys want, I can teach you guys how to create your own API using Visual Studio in a later video. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to scroll down here and take a look. They're saying, hey, if you go to this address, so if I copy that and I paste that, you'll get back data. Simple enough, right? So if we go back to it, you'll see that they say, hey, go out and fetch this data and then response, response, right? But we don't really need to worry about that. Godot handles a lot of that for us, but we do need to remember this little address here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start up Godot. So let me go ahead and start that up. We will add a new project, call it API test project. And we will create 
our API test project. Now I'm gonna have to rescale this for you guys as always. All right, so what we're gonna do is we'll add in a user interface. We're gonna right click, add in a child node, and we're gonna add in a button. Now we'll go ahead and zoom in here. Then we're going to grab this, move it over, and bring it up a bit, and we'll just call this get data from API. All right. And now what we're going to do is we'll right click our control, attach a script and call it API connection.gd. And we're also going to right click our control, add in a child node HTTP request. Now with these HTTP requests, you only want to have one HTTP request out at a time. If you have more than one, Godot is going to get a little upset with you. So generally speaking, you just want one. So first things first, let's go ahead and connect our node button. So button up and we'll call this get underscore get underscore a P I underscore data. All right. So now what we can do is we can hit go click up here on our get API data, hit dollar sign http request dot request quote https colon slash slash and honestly let's just go ahead and grab if i bring this down just a touch for you guys let's just go ahead and grab this data here so let's just actually grab this so control c and then paste that in there so now if I run this, yeah, go ahead and save it and just call it test API scene.tcsn or tscn. And if we click this, nothing happens. Now, the reason why is because we need the data is going out. It's making the request, but the application isn't getting the response. So we need to connect our HTTP request back to our uh, GD script. So if we click on HTTP request, you'll see a little thing called request completed. So if you double click on that, you click on your control and you say on HTTP request completed, connect that, you'll see it's gonna pass in all of this crazy data. And what that does is it says, hey, here's all that data that you were, were requesting, right? So let's hit enter and then go var JSON is equal to json dot parse and we will say hey let's parse that body dot get underscore string underscore from underscore utf8 all right now what this does is if you look at apis the re response that you get will be the result you'll get a response code you'll get headers and you'll get a body now this is super useful the body is the data that you're getting back the headers are what type of data is coming back so for instance if your api comes back with xml instead of json you need to read your headers to make sure especially if you're running into multiple different systems that you're connecting out for data if that makes sense the response code is if it succeeded so for instance if it can't find the folder you'll get a 404 if it failed because of some reason you'll get a 500 result is the result product of the application so it's just the entire object so what we're doing here is we're saying var json is json dot parse the body so we're literally saying hey json which JSON, if you guys don't know, is a data structured language that people use to do things like save games or pass data. So for instance, this is JSON. This is what we're expecting to get back with that little bit of code that we wrote, right? We'll be getting this back. This is JSON. So the user ID is one, the ID is one, the title is some language I don't know, and completed is equal to false, right? So that's basically what JSON is. It's just a structured data coming back from the API. So now that we have this, we need to, we'll go ahead and just print it. So print json.result. 
And what that's going to do is that's going to take the JSON that we parsed from this and then just go ahead and print it out for us. So if we go ahead and run this and play it and we hit get data from API, you'll see that we get that exact data back and it's organized by alphabetical order. That's just something to keep in mind. So you'll see here, that's what we expected to get back. That's exactly what we got back from our API. So we went out, we queried the database or queried the API and got back data. Now, the question is, how do we parse this into actual objects for Godot to understand? What we can do is we can pass in var and we'll say data is equal to json.result. All right, and now if we refresh this, and we hit get data from API and we put a breakpoint here and we click get data from API, you'll see that it stops here for us to be able to debug this. So now if I send this down, you'll see that we get a data dictionary size four. So if we click on that, there's all of our data inside of an object for us to be able to access for our own use inside of our project. So it is really that easy. So now we could take this data and say, let's go to control, add in a child node. Let's add in a rich text label. Let's go ahead and drag that over here. And then let's just duplicate it four times. Let's just pull it all down like this with some data in it. So let's just call this, we'll say test data. All right, we'll rename this rich text label ID. We'll rename this rich text label username. I believe it's username, isn't it? No, it's just user ID. So, and I spelled username wrong anyway. User ID, we're going to go with, I believe they have titled and completed. What we can do and I know that this isn't all structured and some of you are probably going to throw a fit about that. But basically, if we just come down here, we make a function. Uh, set interface data and we pass in the data object that we have. We can go dollar sign ID dot text is equal to data dot id dollar sign user id dot text is equal to data dot i believe it's just user id so let's grab that dollar sign title dot text is equal to data dot title and finally dollar sign Wait, did I get them all or no completed completed dot text is equal to data dot completed. Now odds are this is going to completely fail on me here. So let's just see what it does. Set user. So what we're going to do is we're going to say set user interface data and we will pass in our data. All right, so what that should do if we run this and we click get data from API, we'll see here that it passed in user ID, ID title and completed. So now we should just be able to walk through this. So you'll see that it failed on us right here where it says, hey, this is not the correct type of data. So let's go ahead and put str open brace or open parentheses, close parentheses. And let's go ahead and do that to all of these. So that way we can just make sure that's the correct data type that we need. All right, now let's go ahead and try that again. And then we'll have you step forward and you'll see that it just accepted all of that. So now you can see one false, there's the title and there's the user ID. Well, to do that, what we can do is we can go back to our project, right click, add in a new button. Let's put it below this button here. Something like that. 
and we could say put data on API. Now with the JSON tool that we're using to kind of mock an API, you won't get the same response or you, it won't actually store that data on the database. What it'll do is it'll just re reflect that data back to you as if you sent that data to it, if that makes sense. So think of it kind of like you send me the data, I send it right back to you and I say, here you go, here's the data that you sent me. That's a good way of just making sure that your stuff operates and that your code is correctly built. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go over here, go to node, button up, double click, and we will go to the control and say, on put data on api all right now what we'll do is we need to build our object to pass data to the api so what we'll do is we will type bar data is equal to open brace we're going to mock up some data here so we're just seeding data so we'll say quote id colon we'll say to quote user id colon three comma quote title colon test title and then quote completed is true all right and then what we're gonna do so we're going to say var query is equal to json dot print data. So what we're doing is we're basically just saying json convert this object to json. So we're saying, hey, we need to convert this object to json. So json library, just go ahead and do it for us. And then var headers is equal to open um brace close brace quote content dash type colon application slash json then we need to make our http request so http request dot request and we need to pass in the url that it's looking for so in this case we are looking for right here the to do's so copy that and then we will hit quote paste comma the headers so we want header comma use ssl you can see here it says ssl validate true we need to and then we need to give it an http method now with HTTP methods, there's a lot of different methods you can choose from. And you can see here's a lot of them. In general, we're going to run a put on this because we want to put data out onto the server. So that should do it. Let's go ahead and put a breakpoint here and let's see what kind of response we get back. So put data on API. All right, so we got some data back. Let's see what we got. We got a response code of 404. That means it couldn't find the location that we were attempting to get at so let's see what we did wrong here all right so first thing i lied to you guys a little bit uh on this http request you gotta go down here and add in your query which your query is just your json data so that way it knows what data to pass back now i've set up a small demo and a small api here using visual studio so that way i can show you guys kind of what's going on in the back end right so what this is doing, when I go out here and I open up Godot and I use put data on API, I click on that. You'll see here that it actually posts back a object here that gets you your data. So if you look at Godot, you scroll down here, you can see ID of two, score of three, and username uh, is test title, let's say. And if I look at Visual Studio, you'll see that you're passing in the ID of two, score of three, and a username of test title. So that's basically what you're doing when you're passing data to your API. So to kind of recap, if you want to pass or if you want to get data, you just go ahead and say HTTP request and you just request the data. 
And then you need to make sure that you connect your HTTP request here. And then once, if you wanna pass data to the API, what you can do is you can pass in your data here, right? So whatever data it is, so pass it in, let's say through an object here. You can take your data, string it into JSON. So by printing it into JSON, and then making sure that your content type is JSON because that's what you're printing. And then finally you make your request, which is the location. You wanna pass in the header you created, which is this right here. You wanna use SSL or not. SSL is secure socket layer if you wanna encrypt the data or not. This can be kind of complicated and I can show you guys how to do that in a future video if you'd like. What type of method you wanna use. So in this case, we wanna post the data to the server and you can see here i have http post so that's how i know that i need to post the data and then finally the query which is the actual json data for visual studio to read it and now you can see here that it's passing in the data so this is really good for doing things like scoreboards or doing things like user account data or if you're making a messaging app, right? You could post the data to a server and hold on to that message until a user needs it. Or you could use it for something like, for instance, MMOs, right? They use APIs to track everyone's locations and to track where they are in the game and things like that. So when they log out and log in, they could log out on one machine and log in on another. That's how they keep that data is they have an API that keeps track of all this data for them. So that's what I have for you guys today. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you dislike this video, hit that dislike button because I'm here to make content for you guys. And this video, once again, was a user request. That's basically where I get most of my video ideas is from you guys. Now, if you guys want me to create a API basics tutorial, let me know in the comments below and I can definitely go ahead and do that. Um, it would be a lot of work, but it also is something that is super useful for not just game development, but for web development and for really any kind of development. Nowadays, desktop apps are using APIs. So it's just something that's super useful just to know in general. But if you guys have any other videos you guys want me to create, go ahead and let me know in the comments below as well. Because again, all of my content is created because you guys ask for it. So anyway, thank you so much again for watching. And I'm going to see you all next time. Thanks. Thanks.